I'm Joe Wallace for GearWire.com. We're at AES 2006, and I'm talking with Peter Montesi of A Designs Audio. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Now you have uh, some stuff you want to show us today. Uh, lots sure. of portable gear, I see. Yes, yes. Uh, you're interested in the 500 series. We call it the 500 series. We have uh, several modules in that. We also have several modules in here in this particular rack that we do not personally manufacture, but are friends of ours. What we do have here is we have a 500 series of A Designs product right here. We have our uh, EM Silver, EM Blue, EM Red, and our P1. We have our EM Gold, which is our new release, just just for this show. We also have another uh, 500 series, but it's not a preamplifier; it's an EQ. These were manufactured pretty much for a, a industry that we feel needs to be revived. Okay. There's a lot of different uh, pre's out there. I think the last count was over 3,000, and we just added to it. <laughs> All right. Here's a, here's a format that's been in the industry for over 20 years. Nobody's really standardized this format before. API has taken upon themselves to introduce, reintroduce the format again now that there are other manufacturers making pre's and products for this format try to standardize everything and this is where we're at now okay our pre's are all different colors the reason why they're different colors is because they all have a specific frequency range or a flavor if you will all right our first we'll go with this we'll work left to right we're in america right okay our p1s our p1s i want to make this perfectly clear because most people think that our p1s and our pacificas are identical they're not, all right? The reason why they're not is because this format is limited. There's only 16 volts going across the rails in this format, as opposed to 28 volts going across the rails on our rack mount. Also, one thing that we didn't realize, which was a surprise to us, is because of the size restrictions, our output transformer on this is much smaller than our output transformer here. That ultimately translates into a slightly different tone. All right, so you're not going to get 100% the Pacifica as the P1. P1 has its own flavor. Next, we have our EM Silver. The differences between all these are all transformers. The transformers are going to give you that different flavor, that different color, that different frequency range. All right, so our EM Silver has a steel output transformer, custom wound input transformers. All of our pre's, which we see here, all have different input output transformers all custom wound all right for our specs anyway back to our 500s again our em silver this is an all steel output transformer custom input transformer this is going to translate into lower tones or lower frequencies all right when you use what when i have this setup right now the way this is gone is i have this setup i call it a six pack for drums real simple these are good for overheads, great for overheads. These are great for everything, actually. But overheads, they shine on. Floor rack, tom rack. Now, the tom rack, or the, the uh, floor rack, rather, has been replaced by the EM Gold. Because the EM Gold sounds better on the floor tom, for some reason. I wonder why. Anyway, overheads, toms, floor tom, snare, bass drum, kick. Has the lower toner, tonal frequencies. Sounds great on a bass drum. Sounds great with a ribbon microphone. Sounds great with a with a um, a singer who has high frequencies and you want to get them a little darker. Change the microphone. Also try that. The EM Blue. EM Blue is a high nickel output transformer. Translates into a lot of more a lot more high frequencies. Great for the snare. All right. Also great for other things. It depends on what your needs are. Pre's are. Pre's are subjective, okay? I'm not you, you're not me. What I like on a pre, you may not like. What I like on a microphone, you may not like. What you would use in combination of those microphones and pre's, totally up to you, totally up to me. So we always suggest test other pre's, test other microphones, find out what is good for you, all right? Anyway, we took the uh, output transformer of the P1, and the input transformer, we did a different input transformer, custom on input transformer on this one. The EM reds are going to give you more upfront mids. Therefore, the toms come out great with that. 
what we did with the EM goals, the EM goals, we took the output transformer of the silver, we took the input transformer of the reds, put it into the goal. So it's going to give you more low end with more mids, up front mids. All great sounding pre's. They're all not night and they're all not night and day differences. Subtle differences between all of them. Here's where the magic comes. Magic comes in when you're mixing. Anybody who's done any any sort of mixing at any time realize that's where their that's where their meat and potato is. I mean, they, they had to have a great recording to start with. But you're mixing. That's where you're going to shine as an engineer too. Okay. These are all going to give different frequencies. They're going to put you in different frequency levels. When you're mixing, the separation is going to be phenomenal for you. You're going to be able to pick out my kick drum from my bass, all right? My snare from something that I hit with my electric guitar or whatever. This is where the magic is with our pre's <clears throat> in the 500 series. And that pretty much, without my voice going, that pretty much sums up what we got here. If there's any other questions you have here, let me know. Fire away. I wanted to do sort of a, uh, a beginner question for someone who's starting to think about their drum kit and they're starting to think about proper miking techniques. It's not just enough to set up a kit and hang a mic overhead anymore. No, they're starting no. to go into the advanced stages of recording their kit. Why is this so important and what advice do you have for a drummer who really wants to get the most out of their mic sound when they're starting to finally rig up their mic setup properly? Okay, miking technique is probably the most important thing to do when you're miking, all right? In that particular instance, there's a million things. What I believe in is my front end, which is your microphone and your preamplifier, is the most important chain, part of your chain. You have to have something good going into your system to start with in order for you to work with it later on. Miking a drum kit, you're going to have to do a lot of homework here, all right? There's many different... Ross Hogarth is a friend of mine. He's a Grammy Award winner. I've seen Ross mic up a drum kit with two microphones and get a killer sound. On the other hand, Al Smith, Grammy Award winner, excellent engineer. I've seen him take 30 mics or whatever and do it. Ronan Chris Murphy, another friend of mine. We just finished recording Terry Bozio. If you know Terry Bozio drummers, tell me how many drums he's got. All right? I was stupid. I didn't know. They said, hey, Pete, we want to borrow a couple of pre's for Terry Bozio. We want to record his drums. I said, sure, I got a couple of pre's. No, no, you don't understand. It's, it's Terry Bozio. How many pre's do you want? Well, maybe about 10, you know. So we brought over a bunch of pre's, and I saw his kit and how they... The whole thing is, is with him, the, it was the microphone. It was the placement of the microphone. Also, the engineer knowing the person playing the drums, the drummer himself, all very important things, but as far as micro, miking and pre's, individual, all subjective, a lot of homework, boys, girls, and have fun while you're doing it. We've been talking with Peter Montesi of A Designs Audio. I'm Joe Wallace for GearWire.com. <laughs> no,